Islam Podcast. Den Islam hören und erleben. From where does the authority come in Islam? Authority is a central question here. And especially when you are in the West, because you can now Google, you can now be in touch with Saudi Arabia, with some scholars, or with scholars here. And you know that some are in touch with scholars in the Muslim majority countries, thinking that the only legitimate authority is coming from its central geographical point, which is there from Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and, and other places. So the question of authority is central. These are the three main points as an introduction. You want to talk about <laughs> Den Begriff, der Begriff Theologie ist ja äußerst problematisch und wird im Islam nicht so benutzt wie in der protestantischen oder katholischen christlichen Theologie. Da heißt es ja über Gott nachdenken und die Gottesfrage stellen. Das ist im Islam nicht der Fall. Und wenn man nun trotzdem von islamischer Theologie redet, dann muss man vorsichtig sein, was man mit Theologie meint. Es geht eigentlich um islamische Studien und um islamische Wissenschaften, mehr als um Theologie oder über Gott nachdenken oder über Gott reden. Darum geht es gar nicht so sehr. Dann eben, was es heißt, Islam lehren, das heißt über die Beziehung zu islamischen Texten sich nachdenken. Mit welcher Autorität lehre ich einen islamischen Text? Mit welcher Autorität kann ich einen islamischen Text interpretieren? Das ist das Entscheidende. Ich muss nicht bitte dich immer mit zu korrigieren, weil ich einiges nicht ganz mitkriege. Also, woher habe ich die Autorität? Kommt die aus Mekka, aus Medina, kommt die aus Saudi-Arabien, geografisch von dort? Oder kommt sie aus der Tradition, woher kommt die Autorität zur Interpretation islamischer Texte, Hadith, Koran und so weiter? Thank you. So, if now, out of this, three main points as an introduction, we come to which dimensions and what do we have to teach in universities in the West, but also outside, meaning by this, within the Muslim communities, and what our fellow European citizens should know about the reality of Islam. Because there is a great deal of ignorance, we know that. And the first to be blamed for this are the Muslims themselves. Because this is what we also have to provide <coughs> now. We are based in, in the West, we are, you are Dutch Muslims. You live in the country, this is your country. If you want to be respected, there is no respect without knowledge. And the knowledge should be spread around. And we have to ask ourselves, what are the priorities of this knowledge? What the people around us should know? First dimension, first field, on which in any university in the West, in any Islamic faculty or Islamic uh, uh, of faculty of religious studies, for example, as we have. In my case, for example, in, in we have a chair of contemporary Islamic studies that I'm, I'm just having all this uh, uh, teaching around contemporary Islamic studies. But the, the most important thing is to come to the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are that we are dealing with two sets of texts the Qur'an and the prophetic traditions. And this is something that we have really to come back to the texts. Why? Because outside, in the world of the media and the world of what is said today about Muslims, the most important part of what is said is the problems Muslims have or are causing in the society. As new immigrants, as foreigners, are or as the perceived other in the society. 
We are wasting so much time talking about what Islam is not and which kind of problems that we are forgetting the essentials. And the essentials is that the Muslims believe in texts. And these texts, one is perceived by 99.9999% of the Muslims as the very word of God, the Quran. And then there is the prophetic tradition. You have to take this seriously. Why? Because very often when you talk to, when Muslims are talking among each other, we all know as Muslims that the text is crucial, is critical, because we believe in the substance of the text. We take the text seriously. And very often in the philosophical tradition in the West, the status of texts are quite different. This is why you have now some scholars, mainly in the States, but we also have some in Europe saying, oh, it may be but the, that the Quran is not the very word of God. And they are responding to some Christian criticisms by saying, you will never reform or go through aggiornamento if you don't question the status of the text. And my answer to this is the question of the text or interpretations of the text is not in the status of the text, but in the minds of the reader. Because you have some people reading Karl Marx, the way they were reading it was very dogmatic. But the text was not coming from God, and the problem was coming from the mind of the reader. Reading the text with a very dogmatic mind. So the point for Muslims is very to start here, but for all our universities to take this seriously, we are te dealing with this, the set of texts. And if you come to this, it means to be able to say that the consensus among, as I said, all the Muslims around the world that this book is the very word of God. This is part of Al-Aqidah, which is the Islamic creed, one of the five, six principles of the Islamic creed. One of the six principles that the book is coming from God. Kalamullah. So this is something which is the word of God. Now, what we have to teach here is that, yes, all the Muslims, Shia and Sunni, whatever the tradition, they think that this is coming from God. And there is a set of texts coming from the prophetic tradition. And once again, it's quite the consensus among the Muslims that we need the prophetic tradition to understand the Quran. Now we disagree on the level of authenticity. That's clear. We don't agree on all the prophetic traditions. But to someone who is telling you that we can go for the Quran and we forget the prophetic tradition, the first question is, tell me in the Quran, how do you pray? And straight to the point, you go straight to the point, is it not the first pillar of Islam? Practical pillar, after the test testifying, the first practical pray, uh, pillar is to pray. You cannot find a way to pray in the Quran without the Sunnah, which is the prophetic tradition. So we have two sets of books and texts. This has to be teach, taught, sorry. This has to be taught in the universities as something which is the principles of Islam. Why? Because straight with this, you have to add with texts from the very beginning, we had an accepted diversity of interpretation. Not only we had a set of texts, but from the very beginning, with the prophet himself, what we had is people, you, you remember this story, that after this we had two main groups, Ahl al-Ra' wa Ahl al-Hadith. Two main groups, the people of the opinion and the people of the Hadith, which is the tradition. In fact, it's coming from one story. And look at this. This is what we have to teach in our universities as well as in our communities. Why? Because it, it helps us from the simplicity of the principles to the complexity of the interpretations. The simplicity of the principles, they are simple. But there is a complexity of interpretations. And we have to understand this. Why was this story? Uh, 